founded in 1881, mm -hmm. just 10 years after the university opened. It's existed in lots of different places across campus. Uh, the archives is actually started in the 1930s. Uh, it started out as a file cabinet. It was just a file cabinet for decades. Uh, and then Dr. Arthur McClure, who was chair of the history department, formalized the archives in the 1980s. Uh, the archives and the museum became sort of joined together in the 1990s. That's the way it's worked since then. Uh, so uh, the museum collection is a general collection, so it's everything from all over the world. It's not directly related to campus. And the archive is the official repository for university history. Uh, and then when Dr. McClure started the archives formally, he went about going across campus and gathering every official document he could find and making sure that it's all brought their way here. So the university archive collection is millions of documents, uh, also things like letter sweaters and trophies and collectibles related to university history. That includes all of the Board of Governors papers, the President's papers, all the photographs ever taken. Uh, so you're talking about millions, literally, of documents, tapes, photographs, recordings, and memorabilia. Uh, the museum is at about 30,000 artifacts all taken together. Well, the archives is best known as the repository of university history, so newspapers, yearbooks, that sort of thing. The museum uh, is better known off campus than it is on campus for four really important collections. One of them is the Nance Collection. It's the largest collection of Bedouin material culture outside the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The second one is the Haymaker Collection. It's 100 years of Quiche Maya material from Guatemala. The third one is the Schmidt Collection. That's Mesoamerican, Incan, Aztec, and Mayan artworks. Uh, and the last one is the Roe Miller Shells, those thousands of seashells that we have here as well. So this exhibition is called Sacred, the Ritual Arts of Africa. Uh, it's an exhibition from a private collection called Masquerade, owned by a pretty well-known African art collector who lives in Kansas City. Uh, this exhibition is West and Central African artworks, most of them related to indigenous African religion and religious practices. Um, and it's a combination of masks and jewelry and clothing and some ritualized weapons as well. Uh, we're the only place that this collector exhibits, so we do an exhibition here once every other year of his material, and it's a really you know, unbelievable opportunity for people to see it so up close. Normally in museums, these things are not where you can see them as closely as you can here. In the exhibition, we have three what are called in the museum business costumes, textile pieces. This one is from the Congo, and you can see it actually, we have an image of it in use where you can see person wearing it and how it would have been worn, this net with a mask over the top. This Yoruban one from Nigeria is a mixture of printed cloths, woven cloths, quilting, netting, even beadwork at the top with a mask as well. So this particular one is actually not native cloth. This is all cloth that the EBBO uh, brought in from somewhere else, but it's all stuffed with vegetable fibers. It's all stuffed with plant material in order to give it that body. And then the mask that goes on the top has this headdress, and the higher and more elaborate the headdress, uh, the higher the person wearing its status may be. Uh, so this is one that you wear in particular rituals that are designed to uh, sort of join the living with the dead. It's a celebration of ancestors. So this is a diploma from the first graduating class of the university. This is a diploma for Edwin Gilbert of Warnsburg, uh, who graduated the 28th day of June, 1872, one of the oldest diplomas in the collection. So the McClure Archives and University Museum is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, the African art ends on March the 9th, and then our next one after that is actually about the history of the early gay rights movement in Kansas City, and that will be opening right after spring break.